Hello everyone, I'm Yakov Babichenko. Uh, this is a joint work with uh, Aviad Rubinstein from Stanford. Uh, and the title is Communication Complexity of Mish, uh, Mixed Nash Equilibrium and Potential Games. Okay, so let me start maybe with the bottom line, with the, what, what, uh, what, is the, what are the results. So uh, we proved that finding possibly mixed Nash equilibrium in potential game requires uh, large communication. And uh, this is true in two player games with uh, many actions for, uh, for each player and in uh, games with many players and players and binary actions for each player. Uh, moreover, the same is true for congestion games with many facilities. Okay? All these uh, results will become clearer soon. So the plan of the talk, I will briefly uh, describe what potential games are, what congestion games are, what communication complexity is, and uh, then I will summarize what is known and unknown, and then we'll get to our main results, and at the end I will provide some proof ideas. Okay, so let's start with potential games. Okay, so the class of potential games has been defined by Monderer and Chapley, and uh, a game uh, uh, is a potential game if there exists a, a unique potential function, unique for all players, that, that captures gains and losses of unilateral deviations. Formally, uh, what is written here is what will be the uh, difference in the payoffs of player i when he switches from action ai to, uh, to action ai prime. And this should be equal to the switch in the, the difference in the potential, okay? Just to demonstrate you an example, so here is a game that may, probably many of you saw before, uh, the prisoner's dilemma. Uh, so these are the utilities in the game. This is the utility of player one, this is the utility of player two. <coughs> so this game is a potential game because uh, these uh, numbers are essentially a potential of uh, a game. Indeed, the difference between zero and one equals to the difference between three and four, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. You can verify that indeed um, and the prisoners. This is the potential function of the prisoner's dilemma. Okay, uh, potential functions is a very central uh, uh, class of games uh, in economics, uh, in computer science, etc. For instance, Cournot oligopolies. Uh, are uh, potential games, congestion games, routing games, and others. A, a special property of congestion games, of uh, potential games, that they always admit a pure Nash equilibrium. Why? Because a local maximum of the potential, namely a point such that by unilateral deviation no one can improve, is indeed a pure Nash equilibrium because every player indeed tries to essentially, the, the players essentially try uh, jointly to maximize the potential function. Okay, uh, here is another class of, uh, very central class of games, uh, that of congestion games, uh, defined by Rosenthal. Uh, so, <coughs> uh, the game describes a situation where many agents want to uh, get from source to the uh, to destination, and they have to share roads. And uh, uh, if uh, 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 if many players uh, use uh, the same road, they create a congestion, which is costly. Okay, so uh, the set of uh, facilities is uh, F, which is the road. Each player chooses a, a subset of facilities which we can think of as possible routes from her source to her destination. Uh, and, uh, and the BI defines a congestion on, uh, on each facility, which is simply the number of users of each facility. Congestion on each road. And uh, each facility has a cost function, as a function of the number of users of that road. What is the cost, uh, the, the latency, if you want, in the context of roads, of uh, passing this road, uh, which is the time to pass the road, and each player pays the sum of cost over all facilities she uses. Okay, so uh, in particular, in, uh, the, it is the total time uh, from source to, the, to destination of a given agent. Okay, so this is another class of games. 
And uh, uh, Mondoran and Chapley showed that these two classes of games are essentially equivalent. Every congestion game is a potential game. This was proved by Rosenthal. But also the other way, the other direction is true. Every potential game with action profile set A can be viewed as a congestion game with approximately A facilities. Uh, facility, the number of facilities that approximately equals the number of action. Okay. Um, now let me give you a brief uh, uh, introduction to communication complexity. Uh, from maybe slightly uh, from a game theoretic uh, point of view. Obviously, uh, probably all of you know what communication complexity is as part of theoretical computer science, but uh, also it has very nice interpretations in, in context of game theory. So um, the question where, uh, whether players can learn to play in equilibrium is a question that has been studied, I think, from the moment when uh, when Nash uh, has defined uh, this uh, solution concept, and uh, there are a lot of papers on the. On the uh, in fact, uh, if you want, even the uh, the original paper of Cournot from uh, 1838 uh, motivates the the solution concept that he proposes, which essentially is a Nash equilibrium, by demonstrating a dynamic. Uh, a simple best reply dynamic that converges uh, to this equilibrium. Uh, uh, and then I have a question, how fast can players learn to play in equilibrium? Uh, so this question uh, has been studied only recently. Uh, and it turns out that the correct notion that captures correct the rate of convergence of uh, decentralized dynamic to equilibrium is the context of communication complexity. Okay, as I showed you in the, in the first slide, uh, our results will be negative. So essentially, uh, a communication complexity lower bound as the one we provide here proves that no decentralized dynamic can converge to an equilibrium faster than the, the bounds that we will have. Okay, okay so now, now let, let me briefly say what is known about uh, communication complexity in potential games. Uh, so the first observation is that if we uh, uh, if we are talking about approximate uh, approximate notion of equilibrium epsi uh, epsilon Nash equilibrium, then there is a dynamic that converges very fast to it, uh, and the dynamic that converges fast is the what I call epsilon strict better reply dynamic. The dynamic is very simple. If there exists a player who can gain uh, at least epsilon by deviation, he does so. Otherwise, players stay in the same uh, action. And in each step, I assume that a single player deviates, no, not, uh, no, no simultaneous deviations by players. Uh, the dynamic obviously terminates in a, in a pure epsilon Nash equilibrium, because no one has an incentive to deviate, uh, will not gain more than epsilon by deviation. And in each step, the potential increases by more than uh, uh, by, by at least uh, by more than epsilon, okay? So in particular, if you combine these two observations that the jump of the potential is at least epsilon, um, and uh, the, the maximal value for the potential in potential games uh, with bounded pairs is essentially polynomial in, uh, in the number of players. So in L pairs, with pairs, uh, this procedure takes n over epsilon steps. Uh, a corollary of it in the context of communication complexity is that there exists com uh, communicationally and also computationally efficient algorithm that finds an epsilon Nash equilibrium in polynomial communication. Polynomial in the number of players and polynomial in, uh, uh, and polynomial in the, uh, in epsilon. So this talk will be about exact equilibrium. Okay, so we are talking about the exact equilibrium. Um, and uh, uh, unlike previous literature, we will focus on exact Nash equilibrium, or if you want, exact mixed Nash equilibrium, rather than on uh, pure Nash equilibrium. Okay, so computing pure Nash equilibrium in potential games, in, uh, let me first uh, mention what is known and unknown in the computational complexity literature. So computing uh, pure Nash equilibrium is PLS complete. 
and, and the problem uh, uh, of computing possibly mixed Nash equilibrium is known to belong to the class to the class CLS, uh, which is continuous local search defined by the Scalakis in Papa Dimitriou. Uh, an open problem, and I put here a star because uh, let me mention it again at my last slide, an, an, an open problem in complexity theory is a, a, to provide a, a harness evidence for mixed Nash equilibrium. There is no result that indicates that mixed, computing mixed Nash equilibrium in potential games is hard. On the other hand, there is also no polynomial algorithm problem. Uh, Okay, so uh, communication, uh, uh, what about communication complexity, which is the topic of this talk. So pure mesh equilibrium and potential games requires large communication. This is, uh, has been proved in a recent uh, result by myself, Dobzinski and Sam. Uh, and our result in this paper is that mixed mesh equilibrium requires large communication too. Okay, so even if we, <coughs> Uh, even if we, uh, we want to find the mixed Nash equilibrium, uh, it still will be computationally improper. Okay, uh, let me say a few words why proving hardness for this specific uh, problem of uh, mixed Nash equilibrium is uh, relatively, and is, is not a very, is not very simple task. And uh, the reason for that is, as I told you before, that this problem of uh, uh, mixed Nash equilibrium and potential games belongs to essentially there are different algo, uh, uh, algo constructive proofs for, for its existence. One of them uses Brouwer fixed point and it belongs to the PPAT class. Another one uses the uh, local maximum, a, lo a local maximum argument. And uh, uh, therefore, this problem also belongs to PLS. And as I told you before, there is a, a, sub, a subclass of the intersection of PPAD and PLS, which is called continuous local search. And uh, uh, for, this is one of the classes in this intersection. And uh, put, uh, mixed Nash uh, equilibrium potential games is uh, essentially belongs to, to both. And therefore, it is harder to hide the equilibrium essentially. This is kind of an intuition why it's not, uh, not easy to, to, to prove such a hardness. Uh, okay, so here are our uh, main results. Um, let me formally tell you what I mean by communication complexity uh, of, uh, Nash, uh, of Nash equilibrium. So, uh, especially, I want to point out what is the, how the distribution about the problem is dis, uh, distributed among the players. So each player, I have a private input, uh, uh, which is his own utility. This is kind of a standard classical uh, <coughs> way to distribute uh, information in normal form games. Uh, and uh, the promise is essentially that, uh, that the, this couple of utilities forms a potential game, and the output is a mixed Nash equilibrium. So our results are essentially that in two player games with N actions, you need at least polynomial communication in the number of actions. Obviously polynomial is also sufficient because all the game can be presented by polynomial number of uh, queries. And uh, in uh, N players, uh, and binary actions, the communication is at least two to the power square root. Okay, so there is still a gap between two to the power n, which is the best uh, you can uh, 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 hope to, to have, which is the size of the game and uh, our bound. Uh, just a remark, I told you that uh, this is a promise problem. So the promise formulation is not crucial. Uh, it has been shown that uh, players can verify the potential property in, in uh, polynomial in the number of players and logarithmic in the number of action communication. And therefore, essentially, the gap between the promise problem and the total problem uh, uh, where you ask players either compute the mixed Nash equilibrium or give me a succinct evidence that the game is not a potential game, this uh, total problem is com uh, communicationally equivalent to, uh, 
at the one this time. Uh, let me say a few words about the communication complexity in congestion games. So in congestion games, uh, uh, we, uh, we consider a problem with slightly different, uh, uh, by the way, you can just use the result of Mondelan and Chapley and a straightforward corollary will be that computing Nash equilibrium in the congestion games is hard. However, in congestion games, there is an, another distribution of information which makes much more sense than the one we studied before. Uh, specifically, uh, we consider the following uh, setting. So the private input of player i is the following. So first of all, the common knowledge is the action sets of the players, uh, which actions they can take, not which they but, uh, and player I knows the cost function of all facilities she can potentially use. Okay, so every road that potentially can lead you from your source to your destination, you must know what would be the consequences of taking uh, it given every, any number of players uh, that uh, will take. The only missing information for player I <coughs> is the cost function of facilities that you cannot choose. Roads that are irrelevant for you at all, you do not know the, the, congestion, the cost function there. And the output is a mixed Nash equilibrium. But we show that even for this uh, kind of more restrictive uh, uh, distribution of information, which uh, restrictive and you give the players much more information than in the uncoupled uh, setting, uh, even then, the communication complexity is high. The same result essentially. Uh, let me say just a few words. So uh, as you can see, the, the, the result is essentially about the game with, uh, with many facilities, with the facilities uh, that, uh, that are exponential uh, in the number of players. And it is impossible to prove uh, hardness uh, in games with uh, uh, with with the, with much uh, with uh, few facilities which are poly, with polynomial number of facilities simply because uh, then players can just communicate to each other all the costs the, the representation size of, of this game is small okay so we need that essentially the the game will have many facilities in order to be able to prove hardness of communication from the, there uh, now let me say a few words about the idea of the proof. So all recent mixed Nash equilibrium uh, query complexity results or communication complexity hardness results, they all share a, a common structure. The proof is quite, uh, uh, share many similarities. And if you ask me somehow to summarize this um, structure in, bullets so i would say that the structure is approximately as follows so you start with hard end of line problem and you embed this line to a continuous Brouwer function and then you define a continuous action imitation game with all equilibria are pure and also all equilibria correspond to fixed points of f and uh, you complete it by disc uh, discretizing the continuous game that you just uh, defined. Okay. This is approximately the structure uh, of all the recent techniques for proving communicational hardness uh, of mixed Nash equilibrium. Why this structure is not good for us? Okay. It is not good for us because if we look at bullet three, which is the imitation game, uh, the, the form of the imitation game approximately up to <coughs> some changes uh, looks approximately like that. Uh, you have two players and uh, one of them chooses X and the other one chooses Y and uh, the, the first player tries to imitate, uh, if, uh, X tries to imitate Y and he pays uh, the square distance of uh, uh, from y, y uh, whereas y tries to imitate f of x and, uh, um, and this is his utility and this game is not a potential game 
Uh, you see here a kind of a different uh, uh, potential games are essentially the very similar to uh, identical interest games. And here you see that the, the, the interests are not identical. That one player tried to imitate X and the other one F of X. Okay? So instead, uh, what we do in the proof is we consider slightly different uh, and, uh, notion of uh, kind of a variant of uh, a different variant of uh, imitation game, which can call potential imitation game. And uh, it looks approximately like that. Uh, both players simply try to imitate each other, but every one of them, in addition, gets the payoff of the, of the potential, okay? And the, the intuition for why uh, this, uh, this game essentially is good and uh, it serves our, our purposes is because uh, if you are now in a situation of when X and Y are both uh, they imitating perfectly each other, uh, then uh, your loss from deviating from X to X prime, uh, your quadratic loss here will be uh, qu your quadratic loss will be this uh, black uh, function, while your gain when you move toward an improvement in the direction of the gradient of the, of the potential will be linear. And linear for sufficiently small, uh, for sufficiently small epsilon, this linear uh, gain will, will be more than this uh, uh, black uh, loss. And therefore, a player will, will, do, will, will prefer to miss the perfect, imi perfect imitation with y and deviate slightly and uh, thereafter Y will uh, forward him, okay? We'll follow him. Uh, okay, so now let me put back these uh, slides uh, of uh, what is the classical uh, proof structure. So in red, uh, you see uh, points that are uh, no, no, that should be changed, should be adjusted. So the imitation game should be adjusted to a potential imitation game, which uh, exactly in the way that I just described now. Uh, but also now we are talking about a different notion, not about fixed point of a, uh, of a Brouwer function, but rather uh, about the local maxima of the potential. Okay, so if before that we had to embed a line to a continuous Brouwer function, now what we want is to embed a line so a continuous potential P whose local maximum is located uh, at the end of the line, okay? And uh, so let me tell you, this is a picture that uh, describes briefly how did Hirsch, Papa, Dimitri, and Vavasis uh, uh, embedded, uh, how, how did they, uh, how they embedded the, a line to a continuous Brouwer function. The small arrows essentially capture a mapping from the, the square to itself, the, from, the, from this point, let's say, to the point that is adjacent to it, yeah, et cetera. So this is a mapping, and we can see that the, all the fixed points, which are short arrows, they, uh, are located only at the um, end of line vertex, which is this vertex. Um, Okay, so this is how it has been done for embedding uh, a, a line to a, a Brouwer function. And this is how it, is, it, it has been done by Vavasis uh, for uh, embedding a line to a potential function. So essentially one way of thinking of it is kind of, uh, my, is think of a river that goes in, this, in the direction of the line. Yeah, go, yeah. The river goes down, and uh, essentially the, the local minimum is located uh, here. So it is simple to describe verbally and also in pictures. The technical tool is quite complicated. The, the most challenging part is to avoid saddle points in this contract, construction. Uh, uh, and our contribution is kind of n-dimensional analog of uh, this uh, Vavasis's uh, embedding. Uh, we embed it instead of uh, 
two di into two dimensional uh, line into a n dimensional uh, we have an n dimensional line over the hypercube and we embed it to an n dimensional potential function why we need the n dimensional because we are talking about n players and we want that the number uh, every one of them will be responsible to a different uh, coordinate of the uh, uh, of the potential and uh, uh, the way to do it is in, in n dimensional construction so uh, and as i said the most challenging is to avoid saddle points uh, by the way why do we need uh, to avoid saddle points if you remember the the motivation the the quadratic versus uh, linear uh, loss in the potential so in a saddle point uh, the this intuition of uh, quadratic versus uh, linear gain in the potential uh, not necessarily is correct, right? Because this blue function is essentially has a slope of zero, okay, in saddle point, and therefore <coughs> uh, there might be bad equilibrium in saddle point. Um, okay, let me complete the talk with uh, very recent progress uh, in the computational model. Exactly the question that I uh, mentioned before about uh, the uh, mixed Nash equilibrium. Uh, uh, in potential games, uh, so very recently, October uh, uh, this uh, this year, uh, uh, together with Aviad, we have succeeded to prove that mixed Nash equilibrium in potential games is CCLS complete. CCLS is a subclass of CLS. Um, this follows, by the way, from one of uh, our results. Before uh, it was another class that has been defined as a a uh, subset of PPAB and PLS. Uh, and in some sense, uh, in some vague sense, ideas from the current papers uh, are uh, applicable in the computational setting, but obviously it requires a lot, a lot of other uh, techniques and uh, a lot of other ideas. And, and this paper will appear soon in the, uh, uh, in the archive. Thank you.